A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. The saying is sure, whoever aspires to the office of bishop deserves a noble task. Now a bishop must be above reproach, married only once, temperate, sensible, respectable, and hospitable, and an apt teacher. Not a drunkard, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, keeping his children submissive and respectful in every way. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may be puffed up with con conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace and the snare of the devil. Deacons likewise must be serious, not double-tongued, not indulging in much wine, not greedy for money. They must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, and let them first be tested. Then, if they prove themselves blameless, let them serve as deacons. Women likewise must be serious, not slanderers, but temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be married only once, and let them manage their children and their household well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith, faith that is the Christ, that is in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, I will walk with blameless, blameless heart. I will walk with blameless heart. I will sing of loyalty and of justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with blameless heart. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I will walk with blameless heart. One who secretly, secretly slanders a neighbor, I will destroy. A haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not tolerate. I will walk with blameless heart. I will look with favor on the faithful in the land, so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. I will walk with blameless heart. rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went to a, tall, a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. And with her was a large crowd from the town. The Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. And Jesus came forward and touched the pallet, and the bearer stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen amongst us. God has looked favorably on his people. The word about Jesus spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in preparation for the homily today, I did a little bit of a search to check uh, that phrase, do not weep or do not cry, and where it appears in movies. And I was able to do a little bit of a survey where oftentimes when someone says do not cry do not weep and probably we've had maybe this experience in our own life where something tragic something horrible has happened and someone says oh don't cry about it don't be upset of course it doesn't help <laughs> it actually does usually the opposite maybe sort of anger towards turns towards that person that said do not weep do not cry but it's interesting here because we have jesus saying this specifically today do not weep do not cry and I want to get into this passage today. 
First of all, we hear in the gospel that he is in a place called Nain, which literally means beautiful, a place called beautiful. But then in the next line it says, as he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. You have almost the opposite of actually what the town is supposed to be, what all of us are supposed to be. Something pleasant and wonderful, but nevertheless, death is in our midst, sufferings in our midst. There's, there's people in our communities that need help, that need love. And although we might call our place a place of welcoming, a place of help, a beautiful place, there's still amidst us people that are going through grief who are suffering. Then it gives us very specific details. It says this person that had died was his mother's only son, and she was a widow with her was a large crowd from the town and indeed you can see how the large crowd would come out this is something tragic I mean not only in our time where a person would become a widow but especially in the first century where often time because of the culture at the time it was if you were to lose your son especially if you had lost your husband before in essence it's you're almost losing any way of sort of making money and doing well and so Rightly, these people of Nain, this people of place called Beautiful that was supposed to be beautiful, came out and were with this mother in her grief. But it's very interesting here. That's This is where we get the line, uh, do not weep, do not cry, um, which unlike the movies I was <laughs> checking the reference of, uh, only Jesus can say. And it would have probably been a shock. You have all these people there and then you have this person who was thought of as a prophet who was not too far away from where Jesus was and uh, in the beginning of his ministry in Nazareth and Galilee it still was in Galilee in fact you have these people there and Jesus says do not weep but only he can say this because he rises this man from the dead young man I say to you arise and oftentimes in our own worlds where maybe everything looks beautiful, but maybe there's something in our life that needs healing. There's someone who's hurting, there's someone who has a disease, someone who's in trouble. We're waiting on them. And what we need to do is we need to go to Jesus. And this is what echoed in the first reading here where when Paul talks to Timothy about the role of, of being a bishop, a priest, and a deacon. More than anything, he actually focuses, even in the Greek and the original language, on the words of, of being a father. Oftentimes these words actually were used for fathers. Temperate, sensible, respectable, hospitable, an apt teacher. But then it talks about how he has to manage his own household well. And of course, we know within the church, there's a tradition for the last 900 years and before that, within the Latin church, the Roman church, of of celibacy within the priesthood and of course men are brought to the priesthood and we call them father because they're spiritual fathers but specifically here at the beginning of the church and the church fathers say this here too primarily the men who are going to the office of deacon or priest are married and, and Paul makes a very very important point if, if your own household is not Christians if your own children aren't Christians and living the faith how can you be a bishop to and a father a spiritual father to so many more but we see how Jesus is truly a father how he can say with all authority do not cry because he's the one that raises this young man from the dead so let us turn to him our father God who will grant every request according to his will who will heal and who will say to us truly when we probably can't even say it to each other do not weep.